Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Bilal Abdul Karim for this week's Q&A. And, um, well, I mean, my name's not Bilal Abdul Karim just for this week's Q&A. It's, um, I'm, I'm Bilal Abdul Karim all the time. All right, so anyway, look, guys, uh, we're going to talk about a lot of things. We're going to talk about what's going on here in Syria. I don't think that we're going to get through the show without talking about um, uh, coronavirus, um, which seems to dominate the headlines in actuality. It doesn't really look like anybody's all that interested in what's happening in the rest of the world if it doesn't have the coronavirus uh, stamp on it. Um, and I totally, totally get that. Um, you know, so uh, uh, you know what? Um, before we get into your questions and everything, um, you know, when I first heard about uh, people fighting over toilet paper and stuff like that, um, I didn't get it. I thought that it was a joke. Being here in Syria and having to get along <laughs> without uh, toilet paper and necessities like that, um, it, it, it really just makes it seem like, wow, man, you know, so many people, particularly in the West, are so pampered. Um, there was one lady who was crying, who was saying um, that if people come in and they buy up the Pampers, and I don't have Pampers to to uh, to uh, to put on my child's um, uh, behind, I guess you would say. Um, so what should I do? Oh my God! And she started to cry, and the video video went viral. I think you guys have probably seen something like that. Um, you know what? Life goes on if there are no Pampers, you know? And if there's no toilet paper, life is still going to go on. Um, but some people just don't see it like that, you know? It, it just They just don't. And it's unfortunate. But anyway, we'll talk about all of that stuff. Let's just get into your questions. Firstly, um, you, we are broadcasting on YouTube, okay? I'm having a little problem with Facebook. We're going to upload that, inshallah, um, uh, just after um, we do the live program. Um, and you know what? Let's just get started. Um, we've got Asim Ala who said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we say to you, Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right, now let's go into um, I don't care, he says. Um, Do you know Dr. Shajul Islam from the UK um, and One Nation UK charity organization? Are they doing good for Idlib people? Can we donate there? Okay, uh, firstly, do I know uh, Dr. Shajul Islam from the UK? Yes, I do know him. Uh, I know him personally. And One Nation uh, charity organization? Yes, I know them as well. Are they good for Idlib people? Can we donate to? Uh, can we donate there? I think that those two entities, uh, Dr. Shajul um, and um, uh, uh, the uh, One Nation charity organization, are doing amazing work here. Um, they really are. I don't have all that much contact with One Nation, um, but I've seen their projects here, and they're just amazing. So I think that you you wouldn't go wrong if you donated uh, uh, to them. As for Dr. Shadjul, this guy, he just does stuff that, I mean, amazing hospitals that he's been able to put together. He has done so much for the medical sector that once again, if you were to put your donations um, uh, 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 towards him or One Nation, I don't think that you're going wrong at all. Next. Um, uh, it says here, okay. Uh, um, uh, can you tell me uh, about Rujava, uh, um, uh, Rujava. Uh, did Bashar al-Assad take control of all Kurds area and what is the deal between them? I am not prepared to answer that question right now. I would have to review some things, but I couldn't tell you what's happening in Rojava. I have not been there, um, so I'm sorry. I'm going to have to uh, say, um, please bring me this question next week or even direct message me and then I could try to answer it for you. All righty, next up is, um, I don't care again, says, what is the way to go to, the way to go Syria from Indian subcontinent for supporting the Mujahideen? Um, uh, I didn't quite understand that. Um, are you saying, how can you support them from India or come here? I'm not really clear. Maybe you could resend that question. 
Okay, also it says, what is what are the people of Idlib thinking right now? Can uh, Is there any opportunity for Bashar al-Assad to come back uh, to their home? Um, how much Sunni people live under Assad regime? Well, there are a lot of Sunnis that live under the Assad regime, um, um, a lot of them. Uh, uh, can some of those people who have been driven from their homes go back to their homes? <laughs> people are not interested in that. They're not interested in living under Bashar al-Assad, and they are not interested in being jailed and tortured and starved like so many of their countrymen. Um, next, uh, we have Adnan al-Fiqhi. Who says, Salaamu Alaikum, Wa Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Is Al Qaeda really a terrorist group or is that a lie? Now, you know what? You know, this word terrorist group, terrorism, um, and, and all is such a politically charged word. Um, because if let's compare some of the, let's compare some of the stuff that Al Qaeda is charged with. We didn't talk about whether they actually did it or they didn't do it. Let's just talk about the people, the innocent people that are attributed to them for being killed. Let's take that number and put it on the side. Let's call it whatever you want to call it. 5,000 people, 6,000 people, 7,000 people. And it doesn't number up, to, uh, uh, up there. It was like 3,000 people in the World Trade Center Towers. And I have my own thoughts about that. Um, and then you add on to other um, attacks that are all attributed to Al-Qaeda. And let's say that it's all true, for example. You're going to come up to about a number of 5,000 people or 6,000 people or something like that. All right. Let's come up with the number of innocent people that the U.S. has killed in Iraq. Oh, wait a minute. You could probably add a zero to that number to make it 60,000 or more than that, much more than that. Okay, then we'll talk about Afghanistan. I think you could add a few more zeros to that number too. And it's much more than that. So when you look at what the U.S., has been attributed to have done in Iraq and Afghanistan, which we know to be true. And we look. government and their military are all terrorists. <clears throat> I just don't hear that type of a thing. So the reality of the situation is that this word of terrorists and who's a terrorist and terrorism and such like that is a loaded term. I wouldn't use those terms if I were you in the general sense because they're all designed to put that label on Muslims and to totally exonerate non-Muslims from the label of being terrorists. <clears throat> And Allah knows best. Alrighty. Qanat uh, al So said, um, hello, Brother Bilal. I'm happy you're looking great. Hey, I'm glad I'm looking great. All right, that's good news. Okay, now we have here. Um, okay. A uh, curly whirly said, "Hi Bilal. Um, this I know this question is personal, but how do you survive years not seeing your wife and kids and the society back home? Have bad opinions um, if you uh, 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 of you, I think they mean, uh, for doing what they can't do. Well, the first thing is is that how do I survive years of not seeing my wife and my children? Uh, I speak to them like." five days a week, but it's not the same. Um, how do I get through it? I think the best thing I could say is just one day at a time. Um, because if somebody would have told me years ago that the situation would be the way that it is now, um, uh, wow, I wouldn't have been okay with that. Um, because nobody loves their wives or their children more than I do. And I believe that and Allah knows best if what I'm saying matches what's on my tongue. Uh, the other thing is, is that um, <clears throat> what helps me is that I believe that change is going to come. 
I also believe that we cannot accept, expect change without sacrifice. We cannot expect change without sacrifice. It's just not going to happen. But everybody wants somebody else to make the sacrifice. Uh, and they themselves don't want to have to sacrifice anything. They just want to do their own thing and just keep going and other people will make the sacrifice. And then depending on how far they go or how far they get, then I'll think about whether I'll jump in there or not. Um, a lot of people think like that. I'm not one of those people. I just think that we have to do what we can do and this is what I can do. And unfortunately, it's taken me far away from my family. And uh, that is one of the unfortunate things. And it says, and the society back home have bad opinions of you for doing what they can't do. Ah, uh, that part of the question is easy because um, I can't say that I really uh, care all that much if some people um, back home uh, are, don't support the work that I do. Um, because I think that the, that the work that we do here at OGN is very, very important, very, very needed, very necessary. Um, I think the only thing that they probably don't support is the fact that I don't support the mainstream opinion and idea. And I reserve the right not to do that if I don't see that. And that's why um, I can say that, you know, um, I hope that they would understand the work that I do and support the work that I do. But if they don't, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I'm not against them. I'm not uh, feeling uh, uh, hostile towards anybody. Maybe next year, or maybe in a couple of uh, a couple of years, or something like that. If we're all still around, um, maybe then they'll say, "Hey, you know what? That black guy was always talking about some stuff, man. You know, maybe we should check it out now." So there's a process to it, and all this doesn't happen all in a day. And Allah knows best. Okay. All right, next up we have, um, okay, uh, Zirzi uh, Ruzirzi said, Assalamu alaikum, Brother Bilal, wa alaikum salam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You previously said that some scholars said that suicide while killing enemies um, is allowed. Uh, can you please give us the names of those scholars? Okay, well, uh, firstly, I want to make sure that you understood what the answer that I said was. I said that there are scholars, which are most of them, not some of them, most of them, that under certain conditions, under certain conditions, under certain conditions, um, uh, allowed uh, suicide operations, but just going in um, <clears throat> and just uh, just just saying, okay, well, we're just going to use this as a normal tool of war like some people do even over here. No, I never said that, never alluded to that, never believed that. Actually, I also speak out against that. Um, I do not think that this is a, a, should be used as a normal tool of war. So um, I think you kind of misquoted what I, um, uh, what I said. Now, uh, next up. We have here, um, uh, we have uh, Pudiceptilplier. Uh, can't really pronounce that, but they always got some good questions, so let's take a look and see what, he, what they've got. World Health Organization uh, had declared coronavirus, or COVID-19, as a pandemic. Turkey has a coronavirus outbreak, and they closed the Syrian-Turkish border to prevent the coronavirus coming to Syria. Well, there are... 85 approximately, um, 85 corona confirmed coronavirus cases in Turkey. <clears throat> I'm not certain you could call that an outbreak. Not sure that you could call that an outbreak, um, but they do have it. And, um, and in some areas, those border, uh, the, the borders are closed. Um, so yeah, uh, now, uh, somebody would say, in the free territories, do we have uh, a coronavirus problem? Uh, well, I could tell you, but I'm going to put an asterisk next to my answer, that we don't have a single case of coronavirus in the free territories. But we've got to qualify that answer. <laughs> um, some of the testing just arrived, I think, this morning. So we don't actually know if we do have a problem or we don't. 
So, but can we say that there's no confirmed case? Yeah, well, you could say that, you know, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, uh, our uh, healthcare sector is, is, isn't a shadow of what it should be. There's been uh, an exodus of doctors um, that either left the country um, when uh, many healthcare professionals left the country, or they were killed in the in the in the shelling and bombings and targeting of hospitals. So the reality of the situation is that um, uh, we just don't know right now. And then that answer might change in the next couple of days. But right now, we could only say is that we just don't know. Next. Uh, Destroyer of Idiots says, uh, Brother Bilal, I told you that Turkey will betray you, but still after all that territory lost since East Aleppo, you still say that Turkey is only one who helped you, and that is real deceivement. Okay, all right, now look, let's just call this exactly what it is. One, um, did Turkey open its borders and allow millions of Syrians in there? Uh, yeah, yeah, they did. Two, when aid comes in from all over the world, it ain't coming from Iraq's borders, it ain't coming from Lebanon's borders, it's coming from which borders? It's coming from Turkish borders. That's for real. Three, um, those drones that were flying over the air and bombing um, uh, the Syrian Arab army and everything, whose drones were that? Wasn't Trump's drones? That was Turkey. All of these tanks and armament which has come in, uh, who owns that? It's Turkey. Now, after having said all of that, can we sit here and make a case that Turkey, uh, Turkey's priorities are not necessarily uh, totally uh, saving Syrian blood driven? I think you could say that. You could say that. Could you say that they should have entered the fray years ago? Yeah, I think you can say that too. But to sit there and say that Turkey uh, 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 it, it, um, is, isn't one who helped us, or the only one that helped us as a nation state on this level, that would just be, you, you're deceiving. That would be pure deceivement on your part. You may not like the fact that Turkey um, uh, 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 has been helping the Syrian people, and you may legitimately say that Turkey should have and could have done much more than they did. You could make a case for that. But to say that they aren't, and that somehow Bilal is deceiving the people by saying that Turkey is one of the only countries or the only country as a state that helped on this level. Um, come on, man. That, 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 that's just not real. Allah knows best. Has the situation calmed down? Well, the bombings and, and, and the hot battlefronts have cooled. Yes, that is true. But everybody is waiting for it to blow. Nobody is expecting that this ceasefire agreement is going to stick. The Iranians have been loading in their weaponry um, uh, into Sarakib and other areas, uh, fortifying their positions. Turkish forces have been bringing in new armament, Mujahideen forces, fortifying their positions and planning um, uh, uh, for a fresh offensive. And everybody is... Um, is, is basically just getting ready for the next wave. Nobody, I don't think there's a single person here who thinks that things are over, period. Yeah. All righty, next up, we've got um, Mizan Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum, Bilal wa alaikum, salam wa rahmatullahi What did you make of the recent events in Saudi Arabia with Mohammed bin Salman arresting his direct uncles and putting them under house arrest again? Well, you know, I've heard everything from he's doing that because um, one of his uncles is on the committee who would have to authenticate the new king, and maybe he wouldn't be up, he wouldn't be up for that job, so he arrested them. I heard that. I also heard that um, that King 
King Salman, um, may Allah give him what he deserves, Amin, um, that he died, and that's why he arrested them to keep those um, uh, his uncles from even trying to challenge him for the throne. Um, I hear a lot of things, but to be honest with you, I really just don't know. Um, I just don't have enough information to go on, except that there's one thing that's there. Mohammed bin Salman and his loser father are, uh, are nothing except toxic to the Muslim Ummah. They are, um, you know, um, after Abdullah uh, uh, died, uh, you know, people just thought that, you know, couldn't get any worse. And then came along Mohammed bin Salman and his pops. So um, I could say that whatever he's working on, it's for his own benefit and is not for the benefit of the people of Saudi Arabia, nor the Muslims in general. So whatever it is he's working on, I don't know what it is. And to be honest with you, most of those people that he's arrested, eh, they don't look like crowd favorites to me either. But so I'm not going to get too deep into um, Saudi Arabian politics. But the reality of the situation is that um, I don't see any good guys to root for um, um, out there in what appears to be a power struggle. All right, Philip Dingus said, Salam Bilal, wa alaikum salam. Uh, can you ask someone from Hayat Tahrir Sham what the significance is of the circular pattern around the Arabic inscription on their flag? It looks Greek, which I find unusual, so I'm very curious. Thanks. Ah, uh, you know what? I didn't think about it like that. I really didn't. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe I can ask that question, inshallah. Amadou Bah said, um, um, it is true that 13 Turkish drones were shot down by acid gangs. Um, also was Operation Spring Shield a failure. Um, first, uh, the 13 uh, Turkish drones were shot down by acid gangs. Uh, I cannot confirm uh, that number. Of course, when you put drones up in the air, some are gonna get shot down. That's normal, that's natural. Um, and uh, so there's nothing strange about it. If 13 were shot down, would I consider that to be strange? I wouldn't because you send drones where you don't want to send manned planes because it's dangerous territory and there's no loss of life. Uh, so I can't confirm that number. Um, also, was Operation Spring Shield a failure? Well, I don't know what Operation Spring Shield's actual goal was. Because if you don't know what the goal was, then you can't say whether it was a failure or not. And I don't know what their goal was. I really couldn't tell you. Um, but I can say that um, their participation in the recent battles was very good and very exemplary, and they should be uh, uh, applauded and, and commended for that. Uh, yeah, they're kind of about eight years too late, but who wants to talk about that? And, you know, a little inconvenient number here and there. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that um, they fought well, and, um, yeah, th th there's some... Uh, language gaps and problems in between coordinating between um, uh, uh, Syrian fighters and Turkish forces. But at the end of the day, um, I think that everybody here is happy for their presence on the battlefields. So we'll just have to wait and see how, it, how it's going to go. Nobody is expecting um, uh, the ceasefire uh, to continue. The ceasefire was nothing more than a, a rearming period, and everybody knows that. Next. Khattab says, Bilal, is the free, uh, the free government, I, I think that the, the, they're talking about the salvation government here, in Idlib ready and prepared to deal with corona? Uh, I don't think that they are. I don't. Because if they aren't able, if they're just able just this morning to get some <coughs> testing kits, and you got millions of people here, what if the pandemic um, became an epidemic locally? and swept through these areas, would they be able to contain it? No. Let me just be honest with you. Second thing, you and you've got people who most of them, or not say most of them, but when you've got millions of people who live in a refugee camp, how do you do social distancing exactly? This one has a tent here, and that one has a tent next to it. How do you do social distancing? It's impossible. The people here, some of them are so poor, they don't have access to soap on a consistent basis. They just don't have access to it. So how are they going to spend all day long, um, not all day long, but uh, can continue to wash their hands on a consistent basis? They can't. 
So when we're talking about you can't do social distancing, you can't uh, continue to wash your hands, um, you know, uh, uh, with soap. Some of them only have limited amounts of water. Dude, their list of priorities is not corona. They're worried about bombs. They're worried about food. They're worried about inadequate shelter, inadequate clothing, and just general sickness. Uh, corona could really be here. I was sick. My friend, uh, Tokia Sharif, he was really sick. And um, uh, uh, a lot of other brothers and sisters were really, really sick. Did we have corona? I don't know. Do I have corona right now? I really couldn't tell you. I just don't know the answer to that question. I wish I could, but I don't think that they are able to control any type of epidemic here. And may Allah protect us from that. I mean, all right. Let's see what we've got here. Um, Uh, let's see. Um, uh, uh, Asim Alat said, um, I've heard there are women fighters in Idlib. Is this true? Uh, in the general sense, no. Are there isolated ca uh, uh, cases? Yes. Okay, next. Uh, Lordic uh, Kebmend said, is this coronavirus punishment from Allah? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question because I also know that Allah says, La rabbika illahu, that no one knows the soldiers of Allah except him. Now, you've got those, uh, 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 the, the Chinese government, which has been reeling financially and other than that uh, from the coronavirus. Is that a punishment for them because of their, uh, uh, their treatment of the Uyghurs, it is possible. Um, uh, uh, y y you've got um, other countries which are reeling from the uh, coronavirus, even Muslim countries. So I'm just not prepared to answer that question. I really don't know. I wonder what you guys think. Next. Mizan Ahmed said, about the ceasefire between Turkey and Syria, isn't this just another opportunity for regime to rearm, strengthen, and, th and then go on the offensive again? How many times have the regime broken the ceasefire? Okay, look, let me just give it to you straight. I'm not going to add any spice to it. I'm just going to tell it to you what it is. I believe, and Allah knows best. I believe, and Allah knows best. I believe, and Allah knows best. The ceasefire which you're making mention of, first of all, was not between Turkey and Syria. It was between Turkey and Russia. And I think that the Turks were doing very well, Mujahideen fighters were doing very well, and there should not have been a ceasefire because it would have done exactly what you say is happening. Re-up, re-arm, lick your wounds, get ready for the next round. We've seen this countless times. So then the question uh, um, uh, comes about, why? Why was there a ceasefire? Well, I think it had much more to do with preserving Turkish-Russian relations than it had to do with preserving the blood of the Syrian people. Um, Turkey and Russia have many, many complex um, agreements and understandings and so on and so forth. And I think that Ankara wanted to preserve their dealings with Moscow above anything else. Uh, does that mean that they, that they had no care for the Syrian people and their blood? It does not. All right. Um, uh, Mike J said, uh, hi, how is living in government held territory? Example, jobs and schools and health services for a neutral person. And how come we don't hear much about living conditions on the regime side of the territory? Well, um, I just think it's just because you haven't been looking because they've got their own television channels. They've got their own news outlets, both in Arabic and English, and they have no problem to get out uh, uh, how they want you to think life is in their territories. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is, is um, uh, there's no such thing as a neutral person. You're either for the government and you push that narrative. And if you just say, hey, what do you think about Bashar al-Assad? I, I have no comment. You can believe that the security services will be knocking at your door. And Allah knows best. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to take one or two more questions. Mm. Um, all righty. Um, Jack Gamer Life said, 
uh, or should, should be Life Gamer Jack or Life Jack Gamer. Okay, what if you sacrificed, then nothing happened? Well, I could tell you that's easy. Um, the sacrifices that I try to make are for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is a careful account taker of everything. So even if people make sacrifices, they die on the battlefields. If you did it with the intention to please Allah, you will get the reward for that. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that for um, that uh, uh, a person uh, uh, that actions are judged by intentions and for each and every person is that according to what he intended so if a person uh, fights on a battlefield and um, and he is injured but he was fighting for his country or he was fighting so people could say that he was um, uh, 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 a courageous person. Then he's going to get the reward for that. Maybe the people will say that he was courageous or he was a, a, a good countryman. Or maybe they won't and that's all he's going to get. But if somebody is, is doing what they do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah, the best of those uh, to reward, will reward them according to their intention. So it makes no difference um, uh, 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 if the... Um, you know, what the outcome is. It makes no difference because I cannot control the outcome. You cannot control the outcome. Bashar al-Assad can't control the outcome. Putin or uh, Erdogan can't control the outcome. The outcome is going to be decided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I cannot be held accountable for what the outcome is, but I can be held accountable for the effort that I put forward and Allah will reward me and you according to our mutual intent and Allah knows best. All right, everybody. Um, wait, we got one last question here that I think that we should, uh, um, uh, two questions here that we should do. Uh, Jack Gamer Life said, uh, why the Mujahideen would cut M4 as long as they can't protect it? Just as same as M5, and why don't, don't they keep the land and let some Russian trucks go through? It isn't, um, isn't it better than let Russians say they don't open M4 and take it all? Okay, the first thing is, is that if the Russians were to come through, they're not bringing some trucks with vodka in it. They're not bringing some trucks um, with toilet paper and raisins in it. They're bringing military vehicles so that everything to the south of the M4, which is about 20% of rebel-controlled territory, will all be for Bashar al-Assad. So don't be fooled into thinking that they just want to bring some trucks through. It ain't no big deal, <laughs> right? What's more is that these people were uh, complicit and actively participated in the killing of a million Syrians. You can understand why Syrians would be relatively unhappy with having them here. That's another thing. And they say uh, um, that they can't protect it. Well, let's do it like this. Let me put it to you like this. Um, Jack Gamer Life, let's say that you are a Kung Fu expert and a weapons expert, okay? And um, 50, uh, we're going to say that 50 guys show up at your house, and you've got five of your friends. And so you have five of you. Each of you know all the Kung Fu Bruce Lee ever knew. Uh, you know weapons as good as Rambo, and you got muscles like Schwarzenegger. All right? Cool. And you've got all these people in, and all of a sudden there's a knock at your door, and you look outside, and there are 50 people. They've got 23 millimeter cannons, um, they've got RPGs, they've got uh, uh, helicopters, and everything. And they say to you guys, all we want are your wives. Give us your wives and your daughters for us to do with whatever we please. And you know what that means. Just give them to us and we'll leave you alone. Would you entertain for somebody to say, look, just give your wives and your daughters over to these people. Look, there's so many of them. You can't fight all of these people and hope to win, no matter how much Kung Fu you know. 
and they say, look, just send your wife. I know you've been married to her for 20 or 30 years, but she probably did something that she didn't deserve, that, that she deserved it. Go on and send her out there. Send your daughters out there too. Make them look nice and pretty so that they'll be sure to be occupied and leave you alone. Would you be interested in that? You would say, they may take my wives and they may take my daughters, but they're gonna take it with a fight, right or wrong, period. And that's why the uh, uh, rebel forces will never give 20% of their territory um, away at the bargaining table, which was not taken on the battlefield. You take it on the battlefield, you took it. It's yours. We gave it what we had, and Allah decided the battle. But just to sit back and say, well, we just bargained it away, and <laughs> we didn't get anything for it, uh, um, you know, now that you mention it, nah, brother, man, it ain't like that. Okay. Um... Alrighty, um, I think that we're going to have to uh, wrap it up here. Um, yeah, uh, we're going to wrap it up here. Okay, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do for this week. Jazakum al khair. Um, my name is Bilal Abdul Karim, and we want you to help us. Please support us. On, uh, you, why don't you go to our channel, which is supportogn.com. That's S U P P O R T dot uh, support ogn.com I think I messed that up s u p p o r t o g n dot com you can help us with as little as five dollars a month ten dollars a month a hundred dollars a month so that we can bring you more news more information for you to make intelligent informed decisions I am Bilal Abdul Kareem for this week's Q and A live Jazakum Allahu Khaira Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh.